pile into the magic school bus, friends. We're learning about genetic mutation today, and I'm driving. In part one, we're going to talk about the science of how tissue culture actually works. In part two, we're going to talk about some recent plant drama starring the Anthurium Delta Force. And in part three, we will discuss the tissue culture boogeyman, somaclonal variation. So how does tissue culture even work in the first place? Do not skip this part of the video or I will smack you over the head with an unskippable mid-roll ad. Basically, plants have totipotent cells, which are similar to human stem cells in that they're undifferentiated and they have the ability to further differentiate into all of the different specialized cells that make up the different parts of a plant. Each of these totipotent cells has the ability to develop into a new complete plant. This is pretty much the equivalent of if you could grow an entire human from just a severed finger. Totipotent plant cells also have the ability to create even more totipotent cells which is why theoretically you can create infinite plants through tissue culture. Plant growth regulators or PGRs, which are plant hormones, are also commonly added to the tissue culture media to speed up the cell multiplication process. A lot of people point out that their recently acclimated TC plants have a weird growth pattern, and sometimes people try to attribute this bizarre growth to genetic mutation. But no! They're wrong. After a plant is acclimated from being in TC, to being in soil, the hormones that were used during the TC process are still present in the plant for a few weeks or a few months. This actually can sometimes cause weird growth patterns, but the plant should start growing normally after that. A lot of laboratories even try to mitigate this weird growth by putting the plants on hormone-free tissue culture media before acclimating them to being in soil. So no, your tissue culture and thurium delta force probably isn't mutated. More on that momentarily. Today's video is sponsored by Plant Cell Technology and I am so excited to have them as a sponsor because I absolutely love their tissue culture products. If you want to learn how to do tissue culture yourself, Plant Cell Technology has the best resources both for doing tissue culture and also for learning about tissue culture. My code, which is plants in jars, all in caps, gives you 10% off anything on the PCT website, including the upcoming online masterclass. The next class is going to be online Online on January 20th and 21st, and it will be taught by Francisco, the final boss of tissue culture. Recently, a small business called Rare Plant Fairy has successfully tissue cultured a very rare anthurium hybrid called Delta Force, and they have subsequently started to sell these on their website. Another YouTuber, Pretty and Green, recently made a YouTube video talking about this topic called Should Tissue Culture Plants Be Disclosed? You might be wondering why this plant is so expensive in the first place. Pretty and Green does a great job explaining the history of anthurium Delta Delta Force, but just to catch you up to speed, Delta Force is a hybrid of two anthuriums. I can't pronounce the names of them, but this is these are them. The hybrid was originally created by Steve Nock in the 1990s. Steve noticed that one of the resulting hybrids had a much different leaf shape compared to the other hybrids that resulted from the same group of seeds. He dubbed this particular hybrid Delta Force and began to propagate it asexually by taking cuttings. Plants with direct lineage from Steve's original Delta Force often sell for thousands of dollars. Other people have tried to make this same exact hybrid cross between the same parent plants and it has never resulted in a plant with the same leaf shape as the delta force. One interesting fact is that when you self-pollinate it with its own pollen, the resulting plants do not have the same delta force leaf shape, which is a very bizarre phenomenon. Here's a short clip of Marie Nock actually talking about this phenomenon with Summer Rain Oaks in one of her videos. Propagations of this are not from seed. You can see some seeds are developing. Oh, yeah. And I had the first few seeds just a few years ago, and I donated one to the uh, Aeroid Society for the auction. Unfortunately, it sold for thousands of dollars. <laughs> and I found out later that the seeds are not true to the parent plant. This means that the only way to propagate the Anthurium Delta Force is to do it asexually, either by taking cuttings or doing tissue culture. So if Rare Plant Fairy is starting the tissue culture process with an Anthurium Delta Force that has the true Delta Force leaf shape, 
what exactly is the problem, according to Pretty and Green? So someone in DM asked, hey, the two Delta Force on the site, are they clones or selfies? Hello, they're clones. And the person replies, you guys should be really honest here. There's a big difference between being a clone from the original plant and being a cutting or an offset and it being TC. You guys have people believing that the plants you're selling is a direct cut or an offset from the original Delta Force. And that is a very big distinction. This is true. You should be upfront and honest with people and let them know that this is a tissue culture plant of the original Delta Force plant. And I agree. And they reply, we appreciate your feedback, but your assertion that there is a big difference between being a cutting from an original plant and a TC of that cutting is not scientifically accurate. Wrong. Rare Plant Fairy is wrong here, or Sean is wrong here. In his video, he says that rare plant fairies Delta Forces are not genetic copies of the original Delta Force because during the tissue culture process, a form of genetic mutation called somoclonal variation can occur, which can change or alter the genetic sequence of DNA and potentially change the appearance of a plant. I totally disagree with this statement and I would like to tell you why. Are you still on the bus with me? If so, please buckle your seatbelt. Can plants become mutated during the tissue culture process? Yes, sometimes they can. Somoclonal variation is one form of genetic mutation that can occur during the TC process where the DNA code of a plant is changed or altered. This can occur naturally outside of tissue culture as well, and when this happens outside of TC, we refer to the resulting plants as a sport. Some somoclonal variations can be advantageous to the plant, like an aesthetically pleasing variegation pattern, and some genetic mutations can negatively impact a plant, like poor disease resistance. There are certain factors that increase the chances of DNA mutations during the TC process. Some of these are one, using really high doses of synthetic hormones like 2,4-D, two, starting with a really small explant or tissue sample. If you're starting tissue culture from a single cell and the DNA of that cell is damaged, it's going to have a really hard time repairing itself as it grows and multiplies, and this can result in mutations. And the third one is keeping callus too long, subculturing callus too many times, or storing callus in suboptimal conditions. Which all sounds really scary and sounds like mutations are happening all the time, but that's really not the case. Auxiliary culture, which is also known as shoot culture, has the lowest instances of somoclonal variation because you're starting the TC process with such a large explant, usually a node or nodal section. Shoot culture is also the method of regeneration most often used for aeroids, like anthuriums, as well as philodendrons and monsteras. Doing shoot culture with reasonable amounts of plant growth regulators will very rarely result in any sort of genetic mutation. For some reason, a lot of people seem to think that this is a really common occurrence in TC plants and warn others against buying TC plants because of this. Also, most reputable laboratories and even hobbyist growers like myself and others would just cull any mutated plants out of the batch and throw them away instead of selling them. So it's not really something that you should be concerned about when you're making the decision to purchase a plant. If you want an exact clone of a very specific cultivated hybrid, like the Anthurium Delta Force, the only way to guarantee that you're getting a genetically identical plant to the one you want is to either purchase a cutting or purchase a tissue culture plant. If I had the choice between buying a very expensive cutting and buying a less expensive TC clone, I would pick the latter almost every single time. Thank you guys so much for watching. Also, thank you to Mr. J on Discord for helping me with my somoclonal variation questions that I had. Bye.